Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about how to improve at League of Legends. I am super excited to talk about this. As you can probably tell, I'm very passionate about the game of League, but also about improvement and competition. So the video for today is going to focus on League primarily, but of course you can apply the concepts and the skills that I will be discussing to other games and to any other area in your life. I think this video is so important because there are a lot of traps and misinformation and poor advice that I see thrown around in the community and on websites. And they can all lead you down not only the wrong path, but it can also, you know, send you backwards and make you start at a discrepancy in your journey. I don't like talking about this next section too much. I'm going to speed through it. Why should you listen to me? What do I know? I've reached Challenger eight years in a row. I have attended MSI and Worlds representing Oceania. I'm a consistent rank one support in the region. I have 15 national titles, playing tennis growing up, represented New Zealand as the number one tennis player, and I have a bachelor's of science in psychology and exercise science. The way that I'm going to structure this video is going to be into three main sections. The first section is going to be how to learn League of Legends at each specific level of play. Second section is going to be how to learn League of Legends in general for all of us to apply. And then the third section is going to be my first-hand experience and observations with learning some other games, which will be a lot of fun to talk about. Now for the League section, I'm going to break this up into beginner, intermediate, and expert levels. Because the way that we want to approach learning and improving at the game is going to be different depending on where we are in our journey. What our current skill set is, of course, that's going to be reflected by our rank. And so for the beginner section, this is going to be unranked through to low silver. So how we want to approach improving at league in the beginner portion of our journey, it's all going to be about reps, getting those repetitions in, building muscle memory, putting those hours in. League of Legends is a complex game, guys, and a lot of things happen constantly. And potential information is always out there to be able to absorb, but we can't absorb that information if we don't just develop the reps and the muscle memory and a feel for the game. You can't look at the scenery on a scenic bike ride if you don't know how to ride the bike, right? You need to allow yourself to actually experience the game and move past the tools that you're using. And when I say the tools that you're using, these are the champions that you're playing. If you don't know how your champion feels or how to play your champion, and you're always shifting champions, then you're never going to be able to experience the actual game of League of Legends. So yeah, we want to develop a feel for the game. What does a typical game of League of Legends involve? You know, how does a fight feel and play out? What are towers and what are these neutrals that are on the map and are they useful? How does everything just feel from start to end? And the best way we're going to do that is just to get the reps in and to be able to physically experience what happens. You're not going to improve at the game by looking at the highest win rate champions on websites or by theory crafting builds. You need to put in the time. Uh, I'm quite early in my YouTube career, right? And my earlier videos were absolutely atrocious, but I knew that I just had to give it a go, get stuck in, and then kind of feel out what works, what doesn't. And the exact same thing is going to happen for League. And so while we're starting out and learning the game, you want to try out a bunch of different champions, a bunch of different champion styles, like tanks, uh, mages, enchanters, maybe even DPS. Maybe you would not even decided on which role you're going to main, right? So then you want to try out different roles as well. Just get as broad of a basic conception of the game of League as you can so that you can start to build on your knowledge. You can start to take your eyes away from the pedals and the handlebars on your bike and you can start to look around and experience and learn. And so practically what this is going to mean is to simplify your improvement journey by eventually one-tricking. So you're going to start broad, you're going to get a feel for it, and then you're going to hone in on a champion or a class and definitely a role that you really enjoy and you're happy to committing to for the near future. And that is going to allow you to reduce the variables because there are going to be a lot of variables. There is a lot for you to learn. And so we want to one trick or at the very most two trick when we are in the beginner phase. Like I said before, you have to experience the game through the lens of your champion. So simplify that as much as possible, get that sorted and then let's learn. So if you have a big pool, you have too many variables, you can't absorb the information, you can't build habits, you can't notice patterns, you're just always thinking about the next matchup or how your champion's abilities work or even what they do, and it's just going to take too long for you to improve. The next point I want to talk about is just to be a sponge, to remain humble, to understand that you're in your rank for a reason, to have some respect for the complexity of the game, not necessarily like Concepts and mechanics are just so hard to understand, but to constantly execute and consistently execute on them 
is difficult and there are going to be concepts that is going to take a while for you to really feel out so try not to jump to conclusions try to absorb as much information as possible and so for this phase we are going to be building a foundation for us to build off of to eventually become good at the game allow yourself to start building moving on to the intermediate phase of learning and this is going to be high silver through to low diamond and so i just talked about building that foundation to allow yourself to actually build your knowledge repertoire is what we're going to call it. And so that's what we're going to be looking to do here. We have allowed ourselves to learn and now we're going to learn. We want to seek out constructive criticism. We want to get exposed to a wide variety of different perspectives through talking, through you know analyzing, reviewing your games, through searching up content, things like that. But the main thing for this phase is that we want to master the fundamentals. And for the fundamentals, for support, I have a whole series of that. I'm going to link that down below. But it's not enough to know the fundamentals conceptually. We need to consistently execute on the fundamentals. We need to understand them. And we need to actively apply these concepts. And so in this way, we're kind of building the framework. We're building the skeleton of our house. We're building constantly on that repertoire of knowledge for us. We also want to be developing champion mastery and to understand your champion's identity. So we know which champions we're playing, but now we need to dive deep into those champions. We need to understand when they're strong, when they're weak. We want to be very comfortable in how a pace of game plays out on that champion. This is going to allow us to reach higher heights and it's also going to, once again, simplify the journey for us to minimize variables and allow you to pay as much attention as possible to the games, uh, to what's happening in the game and to apply the fundamentals outside of your champion. So this is kind of our building phase, right? We're building our knowledge repertoire. We're gaining confidence in our game knowledge. We're being more proactive in terms of the games and in terms of how we're approaching our learning. We're more of a driver, we're making calls and we are developing a cohesive understanding and approach to the game. Now for the expert section, this is going to be high diamond through to challenger. We initially built the foundation and then we built the framework and the skeleton of the house, of the library, of our knowledge. And now we are going to complete the building, right? We're going to fill it out. We're going to furnish it. We're going to add a roof. We're going to do everything to make it a beautiful library. And the way we are going to achieve this is by adding up 1%. There aren't going to be giant blaring errors in our gameplay. There aren't going to be large concepts that we just don't understand and need to learn. It's going to be about little points in the game that just sneak through the generalizations that we have created with the framework. It could be, you know, skirmishes, it could be small build optimizations, it could be anything that kind of catches your eye and you just need to work on, right? And you don't need to create an, an overarching theme or concept to explain it. It just is what it is. It's a little one percenter that we need to improve on. It's a small fire that you need to put out and you're just consistently putting out those small fires, consistently building up and adding those furnishings. Another part of this section is about integrating your own personal play style, your own personality, injecting creativity to your knowledge repertoire. So we built it up, but now we need to add that personal touch, that flavor. Whether that's your interpretation of how to play your champion and what their identity is, whether that's a certain rune or item setup that you like to run, whether that's the pace of the game that you like to be involved in, the decisions that you make and how that reflects your perspective of the game. You have the muscle memory, you have the freedom of mind to be able to pick and choose what works for you and how to integrate your play style. We are now going to talk about learning about League in general. And these concepts that I'm going to talk about will apply to any skill, but definitely to League. And these are going to be independent of your rank. Everyone can benefit from these. So if you want to streamline your improvement, pay attention to each of these concepts. The first one I'm going to talk about is time sensitivity. This is not being okay with wasting time. If you really adopt this concept, you are going to autopilot less, you are going to mindlessly grind less, you are going to value your time. I don't want you guys to settle with anything less than quality and improvement and moving forwards. And you can think of this as almost like developing an allergic reaction to wasting time. If you feel like you're just autopiloting, you're going through the motions, you can have a visceral reaction to that. You can pay attention to it and change something. I personally attribute a lot of my success to time sensitivity. When I was full-time gaming in 2018 in a gaming house with a professional team, there are a lot of times when we were leaning towards wasting time. You know, people would show up late to scrims, 
or people would get tilted during the game. And what I would do is I could feel that our time was being wasted. We're not really learning or improving or moving forwards. And then I would pause the game and just make sure everyone got on the same page. Everyone got their emotions out and got to focus on the task at hand. And I kept on doing that. And I was able to make the most of my time to the best of my ability. And I improved a tremendous amount. It's so easy to go with the flow and just make excuses in your mind, but try to hold yourself to a higher standard. The next is tempo. So this is dictating the pace of the game or whatever task you're involved in, being the master of your own destiny. I've seen the value of tempo in many traditional sports I've played as well as video games, being able to have the first move, not waiting for things to come about or to magically fall in place, but really taking control, taking matters into your own hands. Be proactive, be engaged. The next point is having a coach or a mentor to help guide you and streamline your learning process. A lot of what the current challenges or pros did in league is they just threw crap at a wall for 10 years until they saw what stuck and they eventually got better just through sheer brute force. We don't all have time for that, right? You guys will have full-time jobs. Very few of us will have the privilege to be able to play as much league as we want. And so having someone to highlight the concepts or to guide you through your journey is going to help a lot. I recently signed up to Toastmasters, which is an international club that builds public speaking and leadership skills. And I am starting from complete rock bottom, but I have a mentor in the program and they are helping me to isolate uh, areas of improvement for myself so that I can focus on what I need to focus on. And this is of course going to apply to anyone at any level. You will see the best players in the world in their particular uh, areas of expertise in traditional sports have coaches throughout. Having like-minded peers or being in an environment or community that is sharing your journey with you can go a long way as well. Surrounding yourself with people embarking on the same journey, you will stay motivated, you will be held accountable by others around you and by yourself. You will find inspiration through others and how they are experiencing their journey. Or at the very least, you can avoid toxic environments and communities that will only set you back. There is no shortage of these toxic environments and communities in the league sphere, unfortunately. So both of these points about coaching and having a like-minded and positive environment and community can be found through my School of Support coaching program through my Patreon link down below. I hope to see some more of you guys there. Now I want to talk about out of game, away from the craft or whatever you are investing yourself into. I might sound like a broken record, but it's going to be the same message from my other videos. You want to take care of yourself as a person and in life. In-game and out-of-game are much more closely related than you guys may think. League and competitive environments aren't the best tools for escapism. It's about performance and improvement. If you really want to separate your out-of-game from your in-game, then we would want a more casual gaming experience, right? But here, this is competitive, we want to improve, and so we really need to take care of out-of-game. Like I said, unless you're a casual gamer, but then I'm not sure why you would want to watch my educational content. But place importance on your diet, on your sleep, on your exercise, on your mental health, on your resilience. You're not going to magically solve problems in tense situations in game, in league, if you crumble in similar circumstances at work or at school or in your family. You're not going to stick it out in league over the long run and climb if you've made a habit of quitting tasks in life after a short time due to fear of failure, for example. You're not going to perform at the peak of your current level and push past into that next level and elevate yourself if you're on five hours sleep and you're grumpy and you have a headache with eating trash food all day. I've had several of my students mention how valuable it has been for them to get their exercise in, to have a healthier relationship with the game, to move on from tilt, to stay on track and to remain focused. I would say I'm generally quite resistant to tilt, but I don't even think it's necessarily my personality. It's because I feel good. I take care of my diet. I've worked out and let out that excess energy. And my emotional regulation and proclivity to tilt is night and day if I have worked out or not. Sometimes I jump into my stream and I just let all of the externals and all of the distractions overwhelm me because I just feel tense and restless. It's amazing how taking care of the little things in life makes everything that much better to deal with. Having an unhealthy obsession to reach next levels. So to be the best at something, you have to be willing to sacrifice a lot for it. This is not for everyone. League for most of us will be a hobby and that's totally fine. But you need a certain personality to be able to obsess over a certain task. If that is you and you find fulfillment and purpose in giving your all to a task, then that will be crucial in driving your climb. Don't be surprised or let down when your climb feels slow and then you hear of an 18-year-old who's tearing through the ranks and hits challenger 
I promise you they have insane dedication and obsession over the game, thinking about it on walks in the shower. It is an obsession. So for this point, just be comfortable with your pace of climb and understand that your level of dedication is of course going to be reflected in your level of improvement. Remain focused on what is in your control. And for this, I want to bring up my ace mentality tool, acknowledge the best play, communicate the best play, embrace reality afterwards. There is no point in complaining about something that is out of your control. We're never going to achieve anything from that. We can't influence it. Besides, you know, just becoming a victim and becoming a slave to circumstance. Your effort and your attention should go into whatever actually is in your control so that you can be and do better. Improve on what is in your control. You don't get to complain if you haven't done everything in your control to achieve the desired outcome. Let's say your jungler lost a 50-50 smite and then you get frustrated about it. But did you do ace? Did you do everything in your control? Maybe you could have warded over the baron pit to see the enemy jungler. Maybe you could have gatekept the enemy jungler from even getting near the pit. Maybe you could have communicated to stop damaging the Baron with your pings and sweep out the pit beforehand so it's not a 50-50. Maybe even before that whole 50-50 situation, you could have fought better to prevent that from ever even happening. And this is the trap that we can fall under. There will never ever be games of League where 100% of outcomes and variables are in our control. What we need to do is be comfortable with things being out of our control and just, you know, compartmentalizing them and really focusing on whatever is in our control. We would rather have 60, 70% of an outcome in our control, which might be the upper limit if we really embrace ace mentality, than, you know, 50-50s or even less. So it's pretty much just about maximizing your chances of success. It's the same with poker. There are variables out of your control, the hand that you're dealt, etc. But the best poker players are going to be able to focus on what's in their control and maximize their chances of success, which will make them achieve more in the long run than other poker players. Be your own biggest critic. Only you and no one else will see and experience every decision you do or don't make. Don't rely on your teammates for constructive feedback. They don't know or care about you at the end of the day. They only see the obvious decisions at the forefront. They will end up just flaming anyway half the time. Don't rely on which nexus explodes to be your source of feedback. You can win and have performed poorly. You can lose and have played well. Hold yourself to a high standard. Value performance, not just results. Really chase that perfection and have that driving force come from within yourself, primarily. For this point, I want to share some anecdotes again. So at the start of 2017, which, is, which was my first full-time year of competing, we were absolutely tearing up scrims. I think we went, you know, 21-0 and zero at the start of the year. And it's so easy in those situations just to be able to autopilot and say, well, we're so good, we're just going to annihilate everyone. But you're going to stagnate, right, if you don't continuously improve and push yourself. And so I had a huge focus on making sure that my performance and my decision making was top tier, regardless of the outcome of the game. I could notice some of my teammates, you know, be really happy and giggly and start to become complacent and not really review their games as much as they should. But I would hyper focus on, uh, you know, level one or a trade or a rotation that our team did and try to see the decisions you're making for exactly what it is. Do you think that if the enemy team was better, you still would have had a successful outcome in that moment. And so what I tried to do was just impose the idea of perfection onto the enemy and see how we're matching up against that. Just do, get the hours in. Don't underestimate how important it is to engage with the task firsthand. Click that queue up button. Don't fall into the trap of waiting and hoping for the perfect circumstances to practice. That's never going to happen. You're not going to improve by memorizing the best builds and win rates on OPGG, or by solely watching your favorite streamer or content creator. You need to put in the hours, you need to apply what you know, you need to test things out firsthand. I will say that the more you do this and the more that it just becomes a habit for you, then the less of an issue it might be. Ranked anxiety is a real problem for a lot of us. I've been there, I know how it feels. But the more that you sweep that issue under the rug and you don't confront it, the bigger and bigger that monster is going to grow until it is too much to tackle and you get overwhelmed and you abandon everything. Understand that making mistakes is part of the process. And so making mistakes is actually vital to improvement. You should be chasing making mistakes. It means stepping past your current boundaries. Then if you learn from your mistakes appropriately, your boundaries are going to get extended and then your current limits are gonna improve and improve and improve and that's how you are going to get better. 
So we need to develop a resistance to the fear of making mistakes. It is very natural for us to not want to make mistakes, to let our teammates down, but we do have to understand their importance. In reality, there needs to be a balance between being a psycho, not caring about mistakes, and performing to your current limits. However, in my experience, the message that the vast majority of people need to hear is be more of a psycho. Maybe a little bit of self-reflection on where you think your personality fits in this continuum uh, could be useful for you. But anyway, you know, who cares if you waste your flash there, or if you lose a trade, or if you die there, or if you even lose that game? That's just a single drop in the ocean of your League of Legends career. That game means absolutely nothing in the long run. The more that you can build on your knowledge repertoire, the better all of your future performances will be. So test that limit. If you're not really sure if you can or can't do something, find it out. And then for the rest of your League of Legends career, you will be better and you will know. This ties in quite seamlessly into my next point of having a long-term improvement mindset. I want to start this off with an analogy. Like if you go to the gym, do you expect to just go in one day and then immediately see results? Of course not, that's ridiculous. You're going to pick up some weights, you're going to put them down, you're going to take care of your nutrition, and you're going to do it again the next day and the next day without seeing any results in the short term. It's the exact same with improvement for League of Legends. It's going to be gradual steps you're going to do the right things and you're going to trust in the process that if you keep working out on these muscles of yours, then you are going to notice results. Everyone is looking for that one champ, that one build, that one strat or that one workout that will magically get them the results they want immediately. That's not sustainable. That's just a fairy tale. Luckily for us, the way that reality actually works is that nothing meaningful comes easily or what's the point of having or achieving it if anyone can, right? We want to be able to achieve something meaningful. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. We always wanna be a student and we don't want to settle with stagnating. Let's say you hit your desired rank, fantastic. Let's celebrate that, you can feel proud of yourself, but then what? You've hit your rank, are you just never going to queue again? Are you just going to allow yourself to sit there and stagnate and stare at your rank forever? The game is always evolving, players are getting better, you can easily get worse too. And the fulfillment we find is through setting new tasks and goals and achieving them and moving forwards. Appreciation. We can be appreciative of the opportunity we have in front of ourselves. This game is amazing. It's a lot of fun. It's complex. It's challenging. It's evolving. Of course there are frustrations. Those are going to be in every competitive team game in the history of the world. But League is a great tool at your disposal, so readily accessible to work on yourself and have a blast if you allow yourself to. If you can move past the factors outside of your control, especially your teammates, you really can have a blast with this. And most of all, to have fun. That's the main point behind playing this game. Enjoy the journey. When you are no longer a slave to the moment and to your results, this becomes so much easier. You can enjoy the back and forth, the competition, performing to your best level, the problem solving, everything coming together. Even if you're thinking, coach, there's no way that anyone can actually enjoy this game. If you have to fake it till you make it, you can even do that. I have done that for periods of my time with League as well. For this next section, I put my toolkit of how to improve to the test. It's one thing for me to preach these concepts, but for me to do it myself, to get results, and to share my observations, may serve as a useful illustrator to you guys. So what I did is I climbed the rank ladder in several games, all with different levels of likeness compared to League, and this is what I found. So the first game that I put to the test for these concepts that we've talked about, Pokemon Unite. This was the most similar game that I had played to League. You know, it's a MOBA, you have lanes, there are neutrals, there are jungle camps, there are minions, and you try and kill the enemy nexus. So I tried a couple of different Pokemon at the start of my journey until I enjoyed the theme and the feel and the play style of a certain Pokemon. I did want to choose a Pokemon that I enjoyed the theme, the feel, and the play style of so that I could commit to them for the future and learn the game. Since I'm familiar with uh, supportive and tank and carry classes from League, I didn't need to feel them out too much to understand, you know, what they do in general. And I ended up hitting Masters, and this is my journey on hitting that highest rank, which is pretty much Challenger in League. I started off trying out Eldegoss. Very simple design. I didn't like the playstyle. It was too supportive. It didn't really have that much agency. And then I moved on to Cinderace pretty quickly. Very high tempo, carry oriented. I enjoyed the playstyle. I played Cinderace in the jungle and was very efficient. I was able to develop huge leads and eventually I branched off from having 
only Cinderace in my champ pool to having Cinderace and Snorlax. Now, Snorlax, very simple, effective. He had CC, he was a frontliner, absolutely loved the playstyle. And this is like more of an engager playstyle rather than a carry playstyle, I would say. Which did shine a little bit of light on the champions that I enjoy to play in League as well, right? Because I'm very um, drawn to champions like Rel and Rakan, these engagers that can get the play started. So anyway, initially I played around with websites for like stats and for team comps, but it just didn't really feel helpful. It felt like a bit of a trap. They weren't reflective of, you know, what I enjoy playing and the games that I was experiencing. And tier lists are always subjective and are going to be skewed towards higher level of play as well. So I did expect this as I preached the same for my students, but experiencing it firsthand was encouraging. After I had my champ pool sorted, I could learn and experience the actual game. I was always focused and on the lookout for patterns, for optimizations, for observing how something felt and how effective tactics felt in the game. I learned how to ride my bike and I was able to look around and pay attention to what's going on. What this realistically meant was I learned how to optimize my clear on Cinder Ace jungle, how to use my dash ability to deal damage and move to the next location, which neutrals to contest, which levels were important power spikes for Cinder Ace, for Snorlax. I already knew a lot about some fundamentals that carry over between the games, such as cooldown management, health pool. I knew about spacing, about neutral camps, about prio, about like runes and summoner spells equivalent uh, set up in Unite, about skill order, etc. So it wasn't the most challenging or impressive climb in my eyes, but it did help to shine some light on how to approach a game that you don't have any champ mastery on. I did notice that the ranked system was putting me with other competitive gamers relatively quickly, which was nice. So I didn't feel like I was stomping kids after they had just come home from school for too long. Um, but the main thing was the shorter game times and the game felt much more coin flip than League. Zapdos, this is like the Baron Nasher of Unite, is very easy to contest. It's in the middle of the map. At any deficit, you can kind of flip the game and mount a comeback and win from there. And so sometimes you don't even want to hit Zapdos when you are ahead because then if the enemy team steals it, they just get the last hit, then they can uh, run away with it. Initially, I duoed quite a lot. Now, I didn't go into this game with the plan of making a video years in the future to talk about my journey. I wanted to pick up a new game with friends and so I do it a lot. It felt fun to play with someone else and share the journey in that aspect, although I could already feel the trap of duoing coming about. Luckily, I was well equipped and alert to the danger, so I didn't let it consume me, but they were quick to blame teammates and talk about Pokemon or strats or whatever being broken. This is OP, we need to ban this, we need to play this. A lot of potential distractions away from me taking maximal responsibility and improving. But I already knew to ignore those types of comments and to really focus on myself and pay attention to what was working from my perspective. I finished up my climb just playing solo queue and got the highest rank solo. The next game I'm going to talk about TFT. Some similarities, a lot of differences to League. Obviously this is an individual game, not a team game. So for TFT I hit 1k LP challenger. I had never played an auto battler like it before. I had no idea what econ was or any idea of what a solid game of TFT would look like. Anyway, I used paying attention to how comps fit together and how it felt like I could make a strong board. I used that alongside seeing what these content creators did to create strong boards themselves. And that kind of springboarded my knowledge and my journey. I also simplified my journey by starting off the set with a very basic strat of reroll. When you reroll, you just one trick and Hyper focus on one comp and nothing you do or nothing anyone else does is going to change your decisions. So you can just turn your brain off, do the same thing over and over. And that way I was able to minimize distractions. Again, learn how to ride a bike. And then once I know how to ride that bike, I can start looking around at the scenery. Now what that scenery is like for TFT, which rounds you would cleanly level without over leveling, positioning, you know, early game comps, etc. So once I was comfortable in that initial blueprint for the game, I started playing around with the tools at my disposal. And that was kind of me shifting from beginner to the intermediate class. I experimented a lot. I would slam really strong early game items initially to win streak and then try to ride that power and that tempo to just get a top four. I would also try to greed for those perfect items and try to create the strongest board possible, running the risk of just dying before you get there. So in league terms, this could be trying out really strong early champs or hyperscaling champs and just seeing what works for you and your games with your personality. Now, since TFT has no teammates, I found it very easy to stay focused on myself and perfect my craft. 
It gave me an appreciation in a weird way of the difficulties of League and how it is more challenging with that team dynamic and also being turn-based, how much easier it was to make decisions with less time pressure comparatively to League. I reached my peak in TFT by embracing my own style, which was very high tempo, fast spikes, slamming items, putting pressure on the lobby, not allowing anyone time and space to greed and scale up in a way, mixing and matching boards and comps over just greeting for perfection. Sometimes you don't get offered the best options and getting sixth instead of eighth is a win. Sometimes you could have just pivoted and been less rigid, etc. So I really try to pay attention to what I could have done better away from the results. Just like in League, if you lose the game, that doesn't mean you can't take anything away from it. If you win the game, it doesn't mean you played perfectly. Pay attention to your decisions and your performance. But yeah, I branched out the most at high elo, just like in League of Legends you would. We hear about so many pro players or challenger players having climbed up the ranks by starting off just one tricking and then expanding once they have reached challenger or have found themselves contacted by a pro team. And last but not least, we played Omega Strikers and this was the most different game comparatively to League. It is a completely different idea but it is still a competitive team game, which is a huge element of what League of Legends is for our journey. So Omega Strikers was going to be the best stress test in my eyes of my approach to learning. I had absolutely no idea where to start. I hadn't played a game that was similar to it. Omega Strikers is kind of like Rocket League mixed with Smash Bros in a way, but I've never played either of them. But anyway, there are characters with their own unique abilities and their style. And this is of course similar to League. So I once again approached the game by first trying to sort out my champion pool, by feeling out which champions I enjoyed, which I didn't, which gelled with me. I played some goalie, I played some forward, those are the only two roles in the game. But I stayed away from tier lists after initially having a look and deciding it doesn't matter, I can make work with whatever I enjoy and whatever will allow me to learn the game. But I really do empathize with the draw and the pull and the temptation to searching up what is OP, searching up you know shortcuts, what can I do? What is the strongest? Don't fall into that trap and play what you enjoy. So I settled pretty quickly on Dubu. This is like a giant kind of squirrel character, I guess. I would equate him to Snorlax in Unite or to Galio or Alistair in League. Simple abilities, crystal clear identity with CC and Peel. I also played around a little bit with Estelle initially. This was a forward instead of a goalie. This is kind of an AD carry in a way. She has a simple design, but a high skill cap. I also played some Juno, very unique champion, very high skill cap. I was initially drawn to that, but I felt a little bit overwhelmed. And I would equate Juno to champions like Bard or Thresh or Pike in League. I just didn't have the game knowledge and the muscle memory required to be able to pilot a champ like this. So my experience with Omega Strikers, I couldn't be more convinced about reducing the variables to learn the game. I got quickly accustomed to Dubu and then learned through paying attention to what was important in the game. I have a couple great examples for this. So there's pretty much how I'm going to describe it is like a Wild West showdown in a way where two players can contest the ball. They have both of their guns drawn and they're just kind of looking at each other, waiting for the other to make the first move in a way. There is a cooldown between attacking the ball. So if you hit the ball and then they hit the ball immediately afterwards, they will win the interaction and score the goal because you won't, your attack will be on cooldown and obviously the ball will pass you. This is especially relevant if you're the goalie, right? If two forwards are playing that little mini game, then the ball is just going to go back to the goalie. But if the goalie and the enemy forward is playing that mini game and you lose it, you lose the goal. So you have to be an absolute psycho in this regard. You have to just not care at all if you lose that interaction. If you start freaking out and just trying to get that first hit in the whole time, you're not going to be able to win this Wild West showdown. So I limit tested a lot. Um, I lost many goals for my team with random teammates just to become better at this Wild West showdown. I embraced the long-term mindset and quickly had the results to show for it as I understood the power of this toolset. I began winning the majority of these 1v1 interactions and stacked up MVPs in my matches. I also quickly learned the importance of what I'll call level one tempo in Omega Strikers. So how this game works is you have an ult from level two and then for the rest of the game you have it and it has a longer cooldown than your base abilities just like League. But if you use it at the start to gain tempo, to gain control of the ball, to ensure that the ball is on the enemy half of the map, then you can control the pace of that round. So in a weird way, this was like snowballing in League. Gain an advantage early on and then maintain that advantage to lead yourself to victory. Now this game is my most recent side project. I haven't reached the equivalent of Challenger in this game, but here is my current rank and my current win rate. And I firmly believe if I carry on the same path, it would be a matter of time 
I'm just not currently putting the time into this project anymore. What I would do is I would eventually expand my champ pool and start learning matchups more when I am maybe in the equivalent of, you know, challenger. But for now, I would just be focusing on that champion identity. Just to reiterate, I wanted to show you guys these examples to reinforce that these concepts, this approach, this toolkit works. I didn't get lucky, I'm not insanely talented, I'm just prepared to learn and improve. I know it may not be the most exciting answer, but at the end of the day, be honest with yourself. We can either be brave, give it a real shot with all your soul, invest yourself into your climb, into your journey, and who knows? If you become the type of person to do something like that, maybe you'll do it the same in other areas of your life too. Or you look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself you're not willing to do what's necessary to climb, even though deep down you know what is necessary to climb. It's as simple as that. There's no room for excuses or delusion here. So what do you want? Why did you click on this video? Are you feeling lost or stagnated? Or are you looking for the illusion of progress as if just watching this video will do the work for you? No one can do it except for yourself. I've been there, guys. You know you want to uh, change something in your life. So you get advice and you do some prep, but committing yourself is a whole nother beast. So I believe in you. I hope you take some action if you think improvement will be meaningful to you. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed. Big thank you to all of my Patreons over here. I really couldn't do this without you. Um, the links for coaching, for Patreon, for my School of Support Discord server, for socials, they're all going to be linked in the description below. Any and all support is greatly appreciated.